Everyone, tonight, welcome to the Late Night Show. By the way, this is not a podcast. Don't think it's a podcast. We're on TikTok. It's not a podcast that we're doing. Hey, look at the podcast. It's not a podcast. And tonight, we have a special guest on. Dominic, are you excited? You're going to kill your background music there, Jay. It's just too loud. I always tell this you're too old. That was the old rock. I can't, I can't adjust my hearing aids. They're like so the old school. Hearing aid a little fucking loud. Well, we have a special guest, um, Dominic, on tonight. And it should be a lot of fun tonight. He is a legend in the industry. You may not think he is, but we up here in Canada, ooh and awe of all his posts and everything else, and his podcast and everything that he does out there in the industry. He's taken a barbecue place and made it into a major media network. And um, he also, when you go and listen to his shows, he may throw you on stage without knowing you're going to be on stage. Uh, he's a cool, one of the coolest guys I know. And he's not one of those guys, you're kind of waiting for the, um, the, the how you per- perceive him as this most incredible, nice guy. I haven't figured out when that's going to stop and he's going to turn into one of those cranky guys. And it never has. So it's pretty cool that he is purely 100% uh, authentic and real and that's rare to find in our industry and uh he's a he's a very rare guy rare guy i don't know if i've ever called anyone rare before but anyways we've, we've, we've talked about some people being half baked though yeah that's a different show <laughs> <laughs> we should talk about that show come on <laughs> easy all right let's welcome this this legend in here we go welcome, Ron Walton. Ron. What's up? <laughs> What's up? When, when are we going to welcome the legend? Who? When's he coming on? Who is he? Dude, if you he's don't here. think you're a legend yet, right there. <laughs> and even with Gary V, are you freaking no, kidding me? I don't know about that. I went I went to a meetup to support a friend that owns Everbowl. Jeff Fenster is a phenomenal entrepreneur, and uh, he had Gary at his restaurant. So nice. he's here in San Diego, and I decided me and Troy Hooper, who's one of uh, another digital hospitality leader, we decided to go see Gary. Yeah, how fast cool. did you drive? Uh, I don't drive fast. I drive, I drive. I drive. I drive like I make my barbecue, low and slow. Low and slow. Yeah, <laughs> consistent. We actually have Troy know. on the show on Tuesday next week. Do you? And nighttime? Yeah, the nighttime show. Yeah. Fantastic. How many? How many? How many times are you doing this a week? Five days a week. We try for five. Yeah, five. I love it. Yes, we want to. We want to be the late night show. Um, who watches, we already are the late night show. Who watches for fucking felon anymore, anyways? So we got to take it over for our industry. This is fantastic. I'm so yeah, excited for you guys. This is fantastic. Well, it is. It, it's a lot of fun. We try to take on some serious subjects, like Google messing with our pricing. Now, if you saw that this week, no. What did Google do? Google went ahead and put prices now beside your restaurants when you search for a restaurant in your city. Really? For person. Let's see yeah. about that. <laughs> you better check that out. I'm about to right now. Yeah, you know when you Google your restaurant? Yeah, I just did. And it gives you the list? Yeah. There should be a price now beside the stars. Yeah. Well, I've never it yet. It it's might always just be dollar signs? Just dollar signs. They added pricing yeah. now. No, it has price. It's always had pricing. 20 to 30 bucks. That's what you can get at Cali Barbecue. Come on down. <laughs> there you go. There's your bitch. They just well, introduced me. transparency. Like What's the problem? Well, that, well, what do you mean? I don't understand. It might this be new, new in for us in Canada. This is a Canada thing? No, no. It's new for us in Canada. We've oh, never new had for you that. guys in Canada. Yeah. Well, What's the problem? <laughs> Isn't the price what the price is? Well, it is. But Are we, trying to, to trick, are we trying to trick the customer to come in and think like, you're gonna get a five dollar rack of ribs. Ha, gotcha. It's thirty. <laughs> no, it's it's about price shopping now. People are gonna go like, "Where's the cheapest deal?" Well, okay, then change your pricing. If that's if that's what you're competing on, then change your pricing. I don't see what's the problem here. Let's get the more transparency. We we talked about that, Jay, about not only changing your pricing but introducing items that can can show that you have some good value. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. There. See, we bring Sean on. He just fixes it in fucking thirty seconds. <laughs> no, nope, awesome. stop worrying, Canada. I'm here. I'm here it's to let. Our conversation that we did this week and made it twenty seconds. 
Fucking awesome. Well done, man. How long was the presentation? What was the presentation? An hour? Can you send me the slide deck? What's the problem here? I don't get it. Oh my god. There's no slides. Give me a break. No slides? No. It was a it was a documentary. Dominic went and made a documentary about it. Fantastic. (laughs) Yeah, it's on Netflix. Anyways. So tonight we are going to use Chad GPT like we have already on the many shows that we have done. So for everyone that's going to be joining us, we don't know the topic. Sean doesn't know what we're going to talk about tonight. We also are going to find out if how popular this guy is, which I'm pretty sure it's going to find out who you are uh, and knows who you are. And uh, you know what? We actually, you know, one thing we didn't do today, Dominic, I'll bring it up here in a second. There's a new, oh, there's Troy's watching us right now. Say hi, Sean. Of course he is. Troy, what's up? That's how digital <laughs> hospitality, we all show up for each other. I love if it. I, if I could have tagged you, Troy, I would have tagged you on LinkedIn. But I, I, set, I set the digital hospitality group a, a text. A text? Yeah, a text in our group chat. Is it like the bat signal? It is. <laughs> like, check oh, oh. <laughs> exactly. Show up, show up. Is Troy, on the, is Troy on the cliff right now with one of those shell horns? He would be if if I asked him to. He would be. Well, he could have well, came on. Good friend, yeah. Yeah. Jeez, could have came well, he on. He should have come on. Him. You don't want me <laughs> and Troy in the same room. That's not. Yeah, I'm gonna a throw re- a recipe for disaster. Just go to your text. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's See? a text. Exactly. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, yeah, you're not a legend. Not at all. No. No. You no, got man. people that jumped. They probably like dropped what he was doing. Of in course he did. He's he's with family. his wife and his and his, his sweet yeah. boy. <laughs> he's he's up with family at a dinner. Yeah. We're in it. Well, let's bring this up here. Let's see. Dominic, I got your text, so thank you. <laughs> Dominic always watches out for me. <laughs> so let me pull this up here. Here we're gonna try there. Here we go. I got so many damn screens and stuff. I don't even know what's going on here. How many Red Bulls did you have today, Jay? You know what? I haven't drank a Red Bull since I did a probably show with you. Really? The doctor said no. Yeah. Since you fell asleep? No, since since my blood pressure was at was past the stroke stage. So he's like, he can't keep going. We're in, like, for, we're in for the long haul, Jay. We don't need six Red Bulls a day. No. You're cut off. You're the we're rest of your life. Not. You can only have you can have less than six Red Bulls for the rest of your when life. When you have Red Bull that sponsors everything you do, and you have like Red True. Bull every, I had a like honestly the table I had, there was hundreds of them, yeah. and I kept staring at them, and then you know you get a little sleepy. So, well, one won't hurt, and they make those damn cans too small, so you just suck one back. Anyways, <laughs> ask ChatGPT how many Red Bulls should you have? Should one no, we, have in one life? Ask that. Can ask that. Anyways, let's yeah. bring it up. What's going to do tonight? So here we go, Sean. It's going to. Oh, it does know who you are. Look at that. Look at that. It's both, right. At the, when you when you go out there and tell your own story, eventually ChatGPT will pick up on it. Well, but it's, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna interject here, Jay. You said ChatGPT is being cranky. The fucking thing give us the same answer three three nights in a row. It it always says. Digital transformation. And all, it's like community. Really? Oh, like some of these answers are canned answers, man. I'm just, it's pulling them. Say, give, us, give us three different questions than you've given us in the last seven days. I know, but this is a good one. It says, ask Sean it's about. Good. It's, 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 it's excellent, but it's, 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 just, it's recycling the topics. Maybe we got to start asking it the same damn question then too. And just changing. Well, people's. probably. Anyways. Well, we'll talk. We'll talk. I'm going to go. Ability practices. It's fantastic. Right? It knows who you are, though, by the way. It's good. It's good. Jack. It's good news. Is that good news, Jack? It is good news. Your fan base is like uh, swamping my. Well, need good. Wow. Yeah, question number one is, is, is really exactly what you've done, which is cool, right? So, what's the question? All right, the question is a discussion, I guess. Dominic, do you want to ask the question? I, I'll I can read it if you'd like. Sure. <laughs> ask Sean for insights to the latest digital trends and technologies 
that restaurants owners should be paying attention to in order to stay competitive and relevant. There you go. Sure. Well, I think is that too heavy for a Friday night? No, I it's a good question. And the problem that we all face, myself included, is that we make questions like this more complicated than they need to be. Oh, good. See, you're gonna go. We have everything that we need in the palm of our hands. We all have this incredible device, and yet we complicate what we can use that device for. And we talk about four C's, content, commerce, communication, and community. All of those things live on that device. And when you talk about technology, you know we're lucky to work with some of the top technology firms in the restaurants in the world. We do content for them. We, I'm on customer advisory boards. I work with the founders. And a lot of the times, the language gets more complicated than it needs to be. Amen. Language shouldn't be complicated. We shouldn't why have to we, over, overthink we, what we're talking about. Okay, so Sean, I'm going to ask you this because I preach your, your, your motto every day when I talk to people and do shows. You've, you've got me, you, I think it was the impact was when we did that show together in Toronto a couple of years ago, when I saw you talk about this and I have been talking about this since that moment, <clears throat> why do people make it complicated? What's your, what's your take on that? Cause I, I, I more than agree with you. I, I find people, no matter anything in our industry, they try to complicate it. I'm, I'm on a relentless mission to try to figure that out. Why humans make storytelling online more difficult than it needs to be. And I think a lot of it has to do with ego, with self-esteem, with a lot of the fears that we all have with public speaking. You know, when you think about content and you think about video, all of a sudden people have to face the mirror. This is what I sound like. This is what I look like. This is how I think. And the only comparable thing to that when you're thinking about content creation is public speaking, is getting on a stage in front of people. Mm -hmm. And people are terrified to get on stage in front of people. People are terrified to raise their hand in a boardroom. People are terrified to raise their hand in a classroom. Kids that play sports, like what my grandfather taught me was stay curious, get involved, ask for help. Curiosity, we're all curious. Like anyone that's gonna watch this show, Anyone that's tuning in, anyone that's going on LinkedIn, anyone that's reading a book, like we all want to be better. Like you got to do something about it. I mean, how many times, Jay, have you told people start a podcast and they nod their head? They're like, oh, that's a great idea, Jay. I would love to start a podcast. 99% of them won't start the podcast. No. The 1% that do, they'll start the podcast and they'll go, well, what's the ROI of the podcast? Yeah. Go ROI, return on investment. You want I me think to talk Dominic about return said, on investment? I, no. no. I think Sean Dominic said that as many times as I told people about podcasts, what the ROI was. Yeah, but no. I didn't ask that. I, I'm I'm with you. I'm 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 I would well, be I'm I'm gonna call. Call. He's a total like, afraid, worried, and Jay Jay turned me on to I because I asked, hey, why don't we have one? And he said, I don't know, why don't you have one? And and I said, Well, let's Let's do it. And he said, okay. And, and you know, away we went. Yep. And guess There's what, Sean? Kid. Today, I have three of the top 10 in Canada. I believe it. I have three. What, when I met you, I knew from the words that were coming out of your mouth, from the things that you were saying, that like you were crazy enough to do the work <laughs> when no one's listening. Yeah. But that's yeah. the fear. People don't want to do the work when no one's listening. And even worse, when no one's listening, is when the first person makes fun of you, because that will happen. People oh. will tell you you're crazy. Who do you think you are? Oh, how cute! You have a little podcast, or oh, you're making a selfie video on LinkedIn. The amount yeah. of people that I tell to make a video on LinkedIn that won't make the video, even though they're brilliant. These people are literally brilliant at their craft, whatever they're doing. They're so good at their craft. Make a video, sixty seconds. Tell us a story terrified to do it because they're worried about the 500 people that might see the video well what else are we on linkedin for i know yeah really because because i would say about 90 percent also are not graphic designers either no for what they're posting. graphic designers need to make videos exactly everyone needs to make videos a, a lawyer but i believe needs everyone needs a podcast too i believe everyone needs a podcast you need a show 
by yeah. by podcast you need to have a show you need to have yeah. a long form storytelling every single week because that is a commitment to publishing on the internet it's a commitment to publishing your story every single week no matter what and the problem with podcasts is you say the word podcast and it's a subjective word. It's the same thing of when you say TikTok. When people think, when they hear that word, they go a certain place. Every single yeah. person that's watching this goes TikTok, they think something. If I say X, you start to think, oh, I like that platform. I don't like Facebook. I like that platform. I don't like that podcast. Oh, I, I listen or I don't listen. All of it is just storytelling. It's just video, audio, words, images. That's it. We're human beings, we tell stories in real life, and now we're in a world where there's all kinds of different ways and formats that we can publish stories for free. But we have to have the courage to do mm -hmm. it, and we have to be okay with looking stupid and sounding stupid. And I think the reality of that is, is if people just sat and thought about that, that your last statement is that we're gonna look stupid and sound stupid, we're, we're a reflection of the people that are watching us as well. There, people people will understand that 99.9% .9 of it of, of them will also understand we're much like them, right? People every, will single, see every single day, every single week, I have conversations with people much smarter than me that are very talented that ask me, how do you do what you do? And I say, I stop. I don't think about what I'm talking about. Like I'm not creating content. I'm not creating a script to say, oh, I'm gonna go talk about content creation or podcasting or becoming a media company or barbecue, like whatever I'm working on, I'm just doing it. Like I literally live as if there's cameras around me all the time and I just got really good at figuring out how to capture a little bit of content, put it together and then tell a story and hit publish, whether that's on Instagram, whether that's on LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, podcast, whatever it is. Um, tell us, was that, somewhat trial and error because like now we're saying how do we how do we inspire the industry and people to to go and make that first little leap of course you're going to make mistakes right but if you're if, if you if you take that approach that you're not going to take yourself too seriously are, are my chances of success better the only way you have a chance for success is if you can wrap your head around the idea of getting to a thousand videos if you can't acknowledge that your business, no matter what, in the next 10 years, like forget about 10 years, in one year, how do you get to a, a thousand videos? Yeah. But if you can't wrap your head around that and you're worried about one video, you'll never get the one video out. And let alone once you get the one video, you get to the second video and go, oh, that's a lot of work. And then the third day comes. It's like any habit. Yeah. But like if you check your email every day, is it gonna, are you going to make more money in the long term checking your email every day? We're actually making a video about what you care about and what you believe. Yeah, it's 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 the latter. <laughs> By day a hundred, even if 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 ten people watch, you publish a hundred videos and only ten people watch, you're gonna have five videos that perform better than the other videos. So do more of those five for your next hundred. But like if you don't get to that point, if you can't wrap your head around that, you'll never get any of it. Forget about a strategy on LinkedIn or a strategy on Instagram or TikTok. None of the, the name of the platform doesn't matter. It's just storytelling. You're telling mm -hmm. stories in real life. Your customers are telling stories, your vendors, your partners, the people, that, your investors, the people that want to work for you. They're all listening to stories in real life. So if I'm a brand new restaurant or let's say I'm an existing restaurant, it doesn't matter where, where I am and at what stage we are in our business you know, step one, two, three, what do I do? Make a video about what, what would I, what would be my first video? So the, the easiest thing for a, an existing restaurant owner is you started with an idea. What was the name of the what restaurant? Story? Like yeah. what, what, what is the restaurant called? Ours is called Cali barbecue. It wasn't called Cali barbecue when we first started. You know, there's a story that I tell all the time about this orange tree. So my grandfather started this restaurant that I now own. Oh, and cool. when we started back in the day, he planted an orange tree with my uncle. So my uncle and him planted an orange tree at the front of the restaurant. Now, when I was a little boy, that orange tree was there next to a fountain. That fountain got eventually destroyed a couple times, got rebuilt. But then, you know, about during the pandemic, 
we were redoing the back of our restaurant, adding more smokers to build this master smokehouse. And at the time, my entire team, my contractor, my general manager, we all came and we met and we're like, okay, this tree is in the way. If we're going to bring all this barbecue into the restaurant from U.S. Foods and we're going to be shipping all the barbecue out to the stadiums, to the ghost kitchens, to the Navy, this tree has got to go. And my wife, who's Bulgarian, she said, that's your grandfather's tree. There's oh, no gotcha. way we're going to get rid of that tree. <laughs> oh, no way. And that's guess what? The tree is at the restaurant. Yeah. Good for it's you. It's still yeah. there. And every restaurant has a tree. Whether it's a booth, whether it's a window, whether it's a painting, whether it's a sign, we all have something that we fought over, that's that we care about, that we believe in. We've made all those decisions, yet somehow we've been operating for two years or three years or 75 years. You know, I talk to restaurant owners all the time that have legacy restaurants and they go, our restaurant's not sexy. I'm like, what are you talking about? Your restaurant's been in business for 57 years. What's not you sexy about that? Mind. The whole goal yeah. of business is to stay in business. How many people have you employed? How many people have you served? Like you might not think your plates are sexy, but somebody does. What are, what's the most menu? What, what's ordered the most on the menu? What's the top three items that yeah. are ordered the most? Take videos of how you make those items because I mm -hmm. guarantee you your community, right when they see that video, they'll go, mom loves that omelet. That's mom's favorite omelet. Oh, my uncle will tr travel. He tr every time he comes in to San Diego, he makes sure to come and eat that omelet. Like whatever your thing is, every restaurant has that. Otherwise, you're not in business. <laughs> Dominic, you're thinking it. Well, it's it's just, I, you know, Jay, we, we've talked about this so many times <laughs> so with so many different. Well, we, we've talked about the, the, you know, you're kind of pre you're 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 preaching to the converted, so they say. Um, <laughs> Reaching to the converted, I like that. That's yeah, cool. <laughs> right. So, Newly converted. When did this con when did this conversion happen? What was me, the ocean last summer? summer. <laughs> well, it was last summer for me. But but only I can tell you it wasn't. Again, back it wasn't. It was me asking the question because I was watching what Jay was doing. Yep. Uh, not and I'd never thought of having a podcast ever, yep. except when I was talking to him and saying, "Hey, you know." How's it going? Blah, blah, blah. We're talking. And I just said, we were talking about other stuff. And it, back to the, why don't we have one? Yeah. And he just said, I don't know. But, um, and since then, our goal is, is not really to talk about training. We talk about kind of our business a little bit, but it's really more to, to try and put, to talk about what people are doing in industry and bringing their story out. I'm, I'm not in it to, to be a broadcaster. I, I want to support. You're getting people. good though. No, well, but I, I, my goal was to 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 work with people that we do business with, and Absolutely. to introduce introduce ideas like what Jay's is and what the power of that might be for a, for for any business, never mind a small and struggling business, for little or no money, because this is they need to get their word out, their story, their tree, whatever you know, you call it the tree, but there, there's especially in the last couple of years the people that have survived. They went through a lot of shit. Absolutely. So th there's, well, they, they, they there's even more through, to tell. They, they went through shit before the pandemic yeah. as well. Like I've never found a restaurateur that's like, you know, I'm making too much money. It was really easy. <laughs> it was so simple. <laughs> no. I got to open another one. I got to, this is just, oh, it's too, it's too easy. This is <laughs> great. You, I have interviewed so many people over these years. I've never heard that. And we don't want to hear those stories. We want to hear the ones that are like your tree story, Sean, and other stories that we can we connect to, and you know, and lot, everyone's going through shit right now in some sort of manner at home or at work or dealing with some sort of thing, and um, we need those people like yourself to inspire us to get over that. But uh, but to your point, that I find so many people don't do it; they they'll take it or they, like you said. How many times have I told restaurateurs every restaurant needs a podcast? I, I'm running out of stuff to write about to tell people that, but I'm not going to stop because we need to tell stories through well, this. Well, no, you're starting to make traction with that, though, Jay. Like some people are starting to, I think some people starting are starting to, to <clears throat> well, they're taking that leap, right? I think the, the hard part is making that very first one or talking to, at least talking to you about how do you do it. And then yeah. when, what you know, what Sean just said, when when you're told, you, you got the magic right here, like in your in your 
You got this video studio right here in the palm of your hands that you use, you know, 12 hours a day anyway. Um, well, it's not, it's not only the video studio. I mean, that's the crazy part. We, when we talk about content creation, there's four P's it's planning, producing, publishing, and promoting. And you can do all of those with a smartphone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All of them. You don't need to go and build YouTube. YouTube's free. I launched a YouTube channel for my six-year-old son and my four-year-old daughter. They came to me and my wife on a Sunday morning and said, Dad, my friend has a YouTube channel. I want a YouTube channel. I'm like, son, well, you've been making videos since you were a little kid. Like, We have a Walchef Wolfpack Instagram page of like all yeah. of you and your sister's videos. He's like, yeah, but I want my own YouTube channel. In two hours, we I launched a YouTube channel for them. We recorded our first two videos. Like, we had, I didn't pay YouTube a penny. Nope. Not a penny. And within that hour, my wife was on the phone for free, Skyping with Bulgaria, our family in Bulgaria. And the family <laughs> had already subscribed to the YouTube channel and were no watching way. my kids' YouTube cool. on yeah. the TV. It's awesome. That's the world that we live in. Yet we sit here and, and, we it, and that's the world that, that we have. And it's just going to get bigger that way too, because of the, Absolutely. you know, it it well, yeah. people are, people are losing out on, on the, basically on the, on the free, the free marketing that they can get out of it. Right. They're, they're, it's they're, it, they're it's so much crazy. Free. It's crazy to me. I just went yesterday to, with Troy Hooper, we went to a restaurant leadership lunch in Southern California. Long Beach, beautiful restaurant, San Pedro Fish Market. We were talking to some restaurant executives and they were talking about creating content on LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm like, how many followers do you have? Go, Not many, you know, probably 700 followers. Like where in the world can you go right now and publish something and speak in front of 700 people? Yeah, very yeah. few places, right? Like where? Where yeah. are you going to go to a stage that big? But we're all worried that I don't have 10,000 or I don't have 20, whatever dumb mm -hmm. number. None of those numbers matter. All you need is one person, the right person at the right time to see your video and go, I like what Jay's saying. I like what Dominic's yeah. saying. I want to learn more. Yeah. And, and you have to start somewhere. So it is going to start. I always say this, this model is not an instant win. It's a marathon. I find it's a long journey. And it's a fun journey if you enjoy it. And, but if you're consistent at it, it will turn out the return of what you put into it. But if you we get tired to. after that first, you know, first five posts or 10 podcasts and I'm not number one or I don't have 10,000 downloads to your point, Sean, and I hear this every bloody day and it's like, no, this is a long journey. We're in this for the long haul. And, um, and that's okay. I've, I've had once, you know, I've had everything from, you know, 5,000 people listen to me on these things to, Five people in between. And I don't care. But to your point, Sean, and and, and it's you, you're never going to get past that. And I think even one, you don't get comfortable doing it either. And uh it, you know, if you look if I want to look at Dominic, the first few episodes we did together, he was all nervous and everything. Now he's like how to get him a fancy mic that lit up and everything. <laughs> right. So we just gotta well, get a neon a neon Red Bull sign and we're good to go. Yeah, I'm not getting one of those. Um <laughs> Uh, they, they'd have to, yeah. No, no amount of money would do it. But be like prune juice or what? The, the, I think the thing to that, which you know, even I'm, I'm going to do as, as I, I, I have somebody in our office that I'm going to get to do some of these. Is in a restaurant. You have your staff, and a lot of them want to be creative, and and they could be posting stuff and doing stuff with you and for you. I don't think you need to think you're alone at it because that's Correct. daunting in itself, right? How am I going to do this five days a week or seven days a week? It's like, well, no, you got 15 staff or you got seven staff or you got three staff. If you have anybody under 60, uh, maybe even under 70 working for you, they're, they're, they've, they've got one of these. Almost everybody does. Um, and it, I think if they're, you know, if they're sub 40, probably sub 30, they're going to be awesome at it. They're going to be really good at it because they're already doing it for all kinds of other things for themselves personally. And if you ask them to do something for your restaurant or for your business, they're going to be thrilled to do it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm positive that as much some of them are going to be afraid, but lots of them are going to say thanks for thanks for thanks for trusting me. One of the most difficult things for me 
and for every restaurant owner that I know and that I've spoken to is to ask for help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We literally spend all of our time solving everyone else's problems. But when it comes to this kind of stuff, a restaurant owner just doesn't know how to ask for help. And if we prioritize saying social media is important, digital storytelling is important, who do I know that works for me, works with me, is part of my family, is part of my friend's family that can come and help me? Because this is an important part of what we're going to do is how do we tell more, how do we use more videos? Because if you focus on videos, you don't have to focus on, it needs to be on TikTok. It needs to be on Instagram mm -hmm. Reels. Like That's when people stop. Is they get too bogged down with all the different places that it needs to be. You need to start making videos. It's that simple. And you need yeah. to make 100 videos as fast as possible. Because if you don't have the bar of 100, you'll just never do it. You'll never prioritize it. It'll never be, it'll but never be something that's exciting. And the more that you do it and treat it like a craft, because guess what? When you're done with those 100 videos, do you think next year you're going to need less videos or more? Yeah, you need more. What do you think? You're going to need more on different yeah. platforms. You need different ways to communicate who you are, what you do, so that you can stand out. Sean, do you think that this will ever end? What's that? Like story, not storytelling itself, but using these platforms, or is it just going to get bigger? There might be a new platform that comes out. Do you think this will ever teeter off where people just get, be, it'll just become less of unique and more just I, or is it going to grow i don't see in 10 years i don't see a restaurant that doesn't have a youtube channel that live stream or podcast or FYI. or, or a po podcast live stream but like yeah. my point when i go live on tiktok in our restaurant and i'm with bernice our pit master and she's fabricating 75 racks of ribs off of the smoker like i'm waiting for tiktok shop to come well guess what since I started doing that, TikTok shop is here. My next evolution is waiting for Toast to integrate with TikTok shop so that when I'm live streaming, I'm literally doing a QVC from the internet. And I can that's say, awesome. Jay, in that's Canada, exactly. wants this rack of ribs, and I'm going to have a, a deal with Gold Belly, and Gold Belly is going to ship this exact rack of ribs that Jay saw me live stream to Canada. And there's going to be video of it going to Canada, of you unboxing it, and it's going to be a whole thing. Now, does it mean hundreds of thousands of people watch? Probably not. But somebody is going to be able to watch that journey of this. When you do the first one, Sajana. 100%. When you, yeah, when you do the first I one. I took, I took a Weber grill, a yellow. We got sponsored. Weber sent us a yellow anniversary grill. And I was like, I'm going to make a story on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook of me taking this Weber grill across the, across the world to my wife's village in Bulgaria. Cool. So literally this Weber grill, I took it from San Diego, drove it with Steven in my truck, live streamed it, took video content of it, made reels, going through TSA, going through pre-check, putting it on Turkish Airlines, flying it to Istanbul, like hoping that it makes it through. <laughs> it gets to Istanbul. Then it gets to Sofia, Bulgaria. My father-in-law loads it into his truck. We drive it to the village. I literally took documented this whole thing. You know how many people? Like all over the world from all these different platforms are like, Sean, how's this, how's the Weber grill doing? How's it doing in the village? <laughs> I want to can I, can you give me an update on the Weber grill? Like all it is cool. is storytelling. Yeah. It's cool. They feel so connected to you too, right? It's like they yeah. they know you. You may not know them, but they they you create that relationship, they humanize you humanize the grill. You humanize the grill, you tell a story about it. I mean, humanize the robot, humanize whatever you have, humanize the orange tree that's in front of the restaurant, you know? Do you think it will take 10 years for every restaurant to be that? Or do you think it's going to take it sooner? To be honest with you, I mean, I know that Toast has 100,000 customers. And of the 100,000 customers, there's a small percentage that are on online ordering. So I think we're still early. We're still yeah. Early. You know, it's unfortunate. We're paving. We're paving. Still, I mean, we're, we're, we're still early. Yeah. Does that mean it's going to take 10 years? Does it mean it's going to take five years? I just know that. I would rather be on the front end adopting yeah. the technology and leading the pack and answering and working with, you know, the best hospitality professionals on earth, because guess where they're going to be? They're going to be on the digital playgrounds called LinkedIn, called YouTube, called Spotify, like all of those places. Well, how did you and I connect, Jay? Because of Matt Rolf. 
How did yeah. Matt and I connect? Was it because I was crazy enough to make stupid videos and stupid podcasts? He found them. He connected with me. And then we came out and I, I spoke about Mr. Yeah, Beast and then, restaurants in Canada. Like, I was right after the pandemic, sure. too. I did a podcast right after either you were on. I had to go to run to do a podcast in a restaurant. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Two buildings down. I'm doing a yeah, podcast after, after the after your lecture. But it is. I think we're paving the road and, and it doesn't come with, it doesn't come easy either. Like you did not no, get where you were, not. Sean. Well, easy. I mean that that's so most humans would not have spent five years investing in Cali barbecue media. We launched our first podcast in 2017. We officially changed our website URL to Cali media. I want to say in 2019, um, so we published a hundred episodes of our show. It was behind the smoke. We turned it to digital hospitality, but it took until 2022, five years of me spending my money, the restaurant money, investing in this crazy idea of creating a media company for us to get our first brand deal. Like how many years? Five, five years spending wow. money, spending like you think if I went to a corporate board that I didn't run and was like, <laughs> Hey, this crazy idea that I have, I know we don't have. <laughs> oh, you want you're muted there, Sean. There yeah, but I'm telling you this. You know, if I go to the board and I tell them, like, "Hey, it's it's been two years. Just give me one yeah. more year. Third year, I promise. Fourth <laughs> year, give me one more chance. Fifth year, I swear I'm going to get another deal. Like yeah. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to find out how to pay for it. It it just it didn't happen like that. But I knew in my heart that, and I still know. Even though I still haven't figured it out, I still know that building a media company on top of a restaurant is a smart thing to do. Yeah. It's something that other brands will do. And they will do it because it's alternative revenue streams. And we all know how expensive it is to run a restaurant, how small the margins are. And there's other ways that we can be smart with, with what we're building and how we bring revenue into our business. Well, I'm going to bring it up and I bring this up almost every show because we did a show, Sean. Uh, about a month ago now, hey, Dominic, about a month ago, we actually created a dollar store franchise model, Sean, Okay. where he actually took the dollar store mentality and built it into, during a show, into one of our late night shows, into actually a franchise model, okay. where it was multiple different streams of revenue, one being digital, and uh, looking at it, because there was, it was, it was almost the point where the profit model of a restaurant today well, we've been doing that model for 150, 200 years, the same thing, right? Yep. Looking at, and then it, and it just, it's not, it's not going in your favor. I hate to tell you, yep. it's not going in your favor. So you have to look at different means or different ways to generate profit, or you have to own 10 restaurants, right? And that's very hard to do for most people. So we actually looked at that. We created a model where we said, okay, let's look at all the different ways that we can generate income. And rewrite the PL. So on your PL, you should have your media plan. And how much profit are you bringing in from that? Absolutely. And that's today's world. And, and I, was, I, was, I was on a show the other day with Scott over in London, and he said that oh, he okay. recommends five, five re revenue streams, five revenue that. streams. That's awesome. Yeah, he's a pretty smart guy. He's a pretty smart guy. <laughs> Less smart than I am. And he that's said five revenue streams, he tells his, his clients. And I, I, I agree with you. We can't look at the same model and then complain that we're not making enough money. No. Dominic likes the word. <laughs> it gets, it's the government. No, it's the model. It's, it's changed. Well, the government's right? got, the, the, the government does have well, their hand in your pocket, right? But it's, it's like, so we have a rule, Sean. We don't say the G word to him. We don't have to make oh, yeah. more money or cut our costs and cut, like, you're, you're at the bottom of cutting costs. There's like, there's nothing left to cut. So yeah, having an alternative and even if you didn't look at it as from a revenue stream, if you just looked at it, Hey, this is my advertising or this is my marketing, right? Whatever you want to call it versus flyers or print or radio or whatever people are doing that isn't working anymore because people are here. And I think a lot of restaurants are slow to adopt that, right? To understand that, their their customers are on their phone on their phones. They're they're digital anyway, whatever that might be, but primarily their phones. So if you're not on those platforms, um, making your own content, even you know for whatever reason, 
um, you're missing out on a, on a big right now, free um, way of, of advertising. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, um, Sean, I, I don't want to take all your time because it's Friday night. You, you have a young family and, and an awesome family. I'm, I love I'm, how here, you share. I'm here for the show. You got my, you got my time. I love how you share Ask your family with your hard hitting questions. Don't out, don't well, outsource your questions to the robots. Go to, go well, to we actually to have Matt Rolf says he's waiting on you, waiting on Kelly barbecue to come north. Yeah. Yeah. Does he want to, does he want to open up a concept? He wants to open up a smokehouse media center. Yeah, that well, says we, coaching stuff. We, I'm going to get into it. Ready to invest? Let's go. Here, here in out. Alberta, we, we don't have a lot of good barbecue places in Alberta. We don't. Oh, no, yeah. you'd be rocking it up here. And dude. we're we're in beef country here, man. You should you should open a place here. I'll open a studio before I open up a barbecue business. <laughs> <laughs> so what, a big, beautiful studio with a little barbecue, a little Weber grill in the back? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I'll bring a yellow oh, Weber. Yeah, Weber. Tell a story about it. That's about it. <laughs> Only if Weber pays. Um, I love it. The um, <laughs> topic. What? What? What's the? What's the effect that your media, your streaming, your videos? What's the immediate? I'm not going to even say immediate immediate effect, but like over from 2017, from when you started, to now. Obviously, it's had a massive impact. You're you're known around the world for what you do. How has that affected sales in your restaurant? Don't give us dollars. Just tell, like, you know, we went up thirty percent, and and you can you in your mind you attribute, you know, twenty of you know half of that increase to what you were doing. Well, I mean, the easiest thing for me to share is that we have media revenue that is not on any restaurant P and L. Like literally we have reoccurring media revenue, whether that's in the form of sponsorship or client work that we've never had before in 16 years of business. Right. And if it wasn't for that revenue, we might not be in business. Wow. You know, so for me, I can easily, you know, share that we were never on local TV until we started making our own videos, until we started you know, posting on Facebook and Instagram and doing a podcast and doing all the things that we did. Um, but, you know, my goal is to teach as many, not just restaurants, but business owners, small business owners that, you know, we all need to make business to consumer content. Like that's obvious. Like if, if we can't get that right, like as a barbecue restaurant, if you don't see pictures of barbecue or you don't see videos of barbecue, if you don't see videos of cocktails that are at our bar like obviously it's going to be hard to get people to come in or to know what we're doing but like what we talk about is the business creator economy which is as a business owner it's just a skill learning how to tell a story how to make a video how to make a podcast how to make a blog so if you do that every single person that you do business with your entire supply chain from the cisco's of the world to the toasts of the world to the Coca-Cola, Pepsis of the world, they all need content and they need business owners saying, this is why I picked this vendor. So make that content and build a deeper relationship with your partner. And guess what? Those companies, they have large marketing dollars. There's lots of really cool things that you can do for your business if you're willing to post videos that other people wouldn't put. I posted a toast unboxing video. Literally the amount of people that laughed at me said, what are you talking about? I'm going to unbox the hardware that comes to your restaurant and make a YouTube video and make a podcast about it and post on TikTok and LinkedIn. I'm like, yes, absolutely. Why? Not to bring someone in to buy barbecue. I did it because I knew that there's another restaurant owner, not just in San Diego, but there's one in Los Angeles. There's one in Miami. There's one in Chicago that's literally thinking I'm on a legacy point of sale system. I need to switch. Why should I switch from a legacy to toast? Well, let's hear what this barbecue guy and his general manager, what are the struggles that they have and why are they switching? And we made that video. And does that video have hundreds of thousands? No, it has like 6,000 views. But do you know how many toast new people, how many sales reps have used that video to sell yeah. toast? Yeah. Why? Because it's me. It's a restaurant owner with my it's general not a toast. Yeah. Yeah. Good for we're you. We're talking about the pain point. Like, 
it was hard for us to switch. We were on Aloha for 12 years. Like we had done everything. We built our menu on Aloha. We had all of the systems on Aloha. Like this was our major technology provider. And we had to make that decision and we had to pay money to do it. But we made that investment and Toast has been absolutely incredible for us with everything that we tried to do with what we call digital hospitality. Dominic, <laughs> you got a question? Well, I have lots of questions. That, his, his, his pain point in, in restaurant is our pain point in LMS, our learning management system, yeah. is everybody's pain point in accounting software, is yeah. everybody's pain point in yeah. anything digital in your business. You a, a lot of times you stick with the crap that you got because of the pain of switching. Yeah, but, you, like it's like switching your bank. Who wants to switch banks? Do you want to switch exactly. banks? I don't, but my bank is terrible. And insurance like, companies say things. Terrible. It's the worst bank. Like, how is banking not any better? But it is what it is. Like, I, do I want to switch my home insurance? Absolutely. But do I want to go through the hell of doing that? No. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and you know what? I think some, obviously not sometimes, all the time, those companies, those businesses take advantage of that, right? They know that we don't want to switch we don't want to have to go to the, do the research. That that's why I'm you know best value all the time, Jay. Because if if why would I have to switch phone providers to get the best deal after I've been with them for twenty years? Yeah. That's right. absolute crap, right? right. That's the, and the companies I think that got it right is hey, we're going to give you the best we have all the time because we're going to take care of you. We get to get taken care of because we take care of you, and we, we'll build that loyalty based on trust. And the fact that we're going to take care of you. Now, if you screw me over for 15 years, at some point, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reach my breaking point, And maybe you did. And, yep. and you switched, right? Well, but you'll like this, Dominic. What, what we say and what we teach is to, is to be the show, not the commercial. Amen. Yeah, cool. The problem that people have when they think of marketing and advertising is creating a commercial. And nobody wants to be advertised to. But I want to hear a story. Yeah. So if you have a story of somebody that's used your product or your service, share that story. It's never been easier to share. Like we all believe in customer. We, what's the best form of marketing? Word of mouth. Well, that word of mouth needs to be digital. So make it digital, record it on video, make it for TikTok, make it different for Facebook, make it different for Instagram Reels, make it into a podcast, make it into a blog post. But like, do these basic things. And if you don't do those things, why are we surprised that our businesses aren't growing? So Sean, I got to ask this, Sean, because I, I just did a lecture on this the other, well, actually a webinar that's coming out next week on this is the importance of humanizing companies, putting a face to a company. Absolutely. How important is that? Can you share some about that? Because I, I scream about this every day on the importance. We have seen some companies like Troy is a great example Absolutely. of people becoming the face of these companies. We know that we know Elon, like we think we know Elon, Elon. We think we know Jeff Bezos. Like we feel there's a connection to those brands. Steve Jobs might be one of the first that started that model of knowing who that the face of the company was with Apple. Um, Walmart's doing this right now. The CEO of Walmart's becoming very out there. And putting a face to Walmart CEOs is is coming out very very hard, very yeah. loud on all. How the important is that? Please tell everyone if it is important or how important that is. Well, Jay, we all we connect to humans. How do I know? How do I know about Cisco in Canada? Like, why do I care? Honestly, I'm not yeah, joking. Yeah, I know, I know, but I, I'm just. Seriously, this is good. Keep it going. I'm like, why do I care and why do I think whenever I go to trade shows here in the United States, whenever I'm speaking, whenever I'm on a show and somebody me mentions food service in Canada, why do I think about Cisco? Not because of their logo, no. not because of their trucks, not because of their pricing, not because of their products. It's because I know Jay, yeah. because I've built a friendship with Jay and I yeah. believe in Jay and Cisco supports Jay. So the more that Cisco supports Jay, the more I'm going to think about Jay. And the more I'm going to go tell everybody in the United States about how cool Cisco is in Canada. And when I go and talk to Cisco in the United States, I go, why is Jay the only one? Why is there no Jay in the United States? 
Yeah. Now, that's my question to Cisco. But like, that's the point of like, we connect to humans. So the more yeah. humans that you have, like I said, Cisco, Toast, Apple, Tesla, they don't need to go yeah. create LinkedIn. LinkedIn's already there. All yeah. of these employees are already on LinkedIn. The ones that tell the best stories on LinkedIn, the ones that add the most value on LinkedIn, people are gonna think about Tesla or Apple or Toast or Cisco or whoever decides to wake up and realize we have everything that we need at our fingertips. See, Dominic, you're becoming the I face of food safety. <laughs> no, it's good. No, no, I, I, I appreciate it. Like you wouldn't believe it. I love that. I'm gonna. That's a soundbite, by the way, Dominic. We're going that to is. use Clip that over up. and over and over and over again. I'm even gonna get. I'm gonna get swag just on that that soundbite. Um, <laughs> but Dominic's doing this right now, right, Dominic? Like with the podcast and everything else, we're getting there, right? Yeah, yeah. We're we're doing it probably a little slower than we should, but I, you know, I I'm gonna. I'm going to put this out to, like I said, to, to people that, that work that work with us um, to to do some of this because they're, frankly, they're they're a prettier face than me for for the for the brand. But they're also, you know, what Jay, if 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 I when I convinced Chelsea to get on, who's our customer service manager, she's director of customer service. People sing her praises and love talking to her because she's awesome. She's an awesome person. She helps people. She responds to emails in like within five or ten minutes. She she you know if she's if she's off sick, people call and say, "Where's Chelsea? Is Chelsea okay?" She hasn't responded. Like the 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 ability for for um for for us and for me, the power in 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 growing content would be that it's not only on me. I'm I got to share that and bring bring other people in because they've got they've got their own stories to tell as well, right? Not not, all, not necessarily even about working with us. My my goal to them would be pick five of your the clients you like to work with and let's get them on and talk talk to them. Not about us, but about them because they you know we we work with some pretty cool places. We work with lots of learning centers. We look work with lots of uh, people that work with people with disabilities and helping them get training and certifications and doing resume building and all sorts of things like that, where we support them with free training to help those people get a job because they're, they're, you know, they're, they're disadvantaged in the world. Yeah. And oftentimes restaurants work and take those people in like family because they can learn a skill, they can belong, they can, um, they can be important parts of, of those businesses. So, that would be is, my goal. Is there a more important skill than communication? No, there isn't. Literally, the well, world, well, world that we live in, okay. if you cannot communicate, if you can communicate in real life, you're going to do really well. But if you can communicate on these platforms, opportunity is exponential. It's exponential. Yeah. It's not going to so, happen over. Right. It's not going to no. happen in one year. It's a craft. I, well, first of all, I think it's a craft that we need to exercise more of. But I also think we need to exercise listening, Sean, more. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think we listen enough. I don't think we listen. I don't think I think we listen sometimes, but we're not truly listening. We got phones in our hands. I, I go to so many meetings every week. And you'll see this going down or they're looking at or their phone or, you know, they're looking at their screens or anything. They're not listening anymore. And I think because sometimes people say, well, maybe it's the communication is the problem. And I'm like, well, sometimes people are communicating really well, but I we're not argue, picking I up. People do not communicate well. Some do. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm for, the most it's the messenger, Jay. It's almost always the messenger. Well. I, I would agree. But sometimes the messenger is really don't listen. I agree with yes. you as well. I agree that people don't listen. But there you go. Dean said problem, listening but not hearing. Well, to, to to what Sean said earlier, you, you you have to craft that message for the person that's listening though, because you might hear it one way, Jay might hear it another way. I'm going to hear it a third way. So Bob, that's speaking to the three of us, has to say it in three different ways to connect with us, or Correct. else it ain't going to happen, right? Well, the you, Dean LeBay, which we love you, Dean. Thank you for supporting the show. Listening but not hearing. 
Correct. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Right. I love it. Well, Sean, we're right, we're coming up to the hour, and I have to wrap this because I know you have a family. It's it's not that late there though in San Diego, um, but I just want to thank you. Well, it is late. Like you're I'll getting see. old too. You're not getting younger either, brother. No, I'm I'm an old man over here. You get okay. not as not old as old as me. I didn't say that. Tommy. Well, I beat you to it, Jay. I didn't say it. I wasn't gonna go there. <laughs> Fuck! I, every I'm time 87, I, man. I like to wear off. off. I gotta wear off the fact that Sean's got everyone in the states thinking I sleep on podcasts. Yeah, yeah. that's I gotta, sleepy I gotta, Jay. Gotta, you do 1500 fucking podcasts and then you do one podcast with Sean and then yeah. or a live stream. And then everyone thinks I sleep on them. Yeah. Did he sleep on your podcast, Sean? It wasn't Sean. <laughs> that was on my <laughs> show. Yeah. What the hell? Jay, it wasn't Sean. Yeah, I, was like, I actually have to go back now that I keep saying this, I actually go find the one. I can't remember what it was. It, uh, I'll tell you, it definitely wasn't Sean's show. <laughs> But uh, Sean, it's if always a pleasure. If I qualify as not listening if you fall asleep. <laughs> well, seriously, I I don't know why you guys were there. I was out. <laughs> like, so I you weren't was listening. <laughs> I wasn't listening. There we go. I was not. Yeah, I was well. listening, but I wasn't hearing. You heard uh, the ambulance when it pulled up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, I've had a lot of weird things over all the podcasts I've done and stuff like this. But one was the sleep. I've had some interesting other things I want to talk about, but. Listen podcast does that mean you're not repurposing this content onto spotify and apple podcast uh i'll repurpose it but we are not an official podcast yet one day we will yes but we'll talk will about be. that after no, when no, i hit no, the no, end no, stream no, i'll tell you why podcast but this one isn't this is not a podcast this right? is a live we call this a live streaming event okay but we will be publishing it on the <laughs> yes. on rss feed yeah okay yeah. actually I don't know if you know this, Sean, but not only have we well, had you well, on as a legend. Laugh, right? What? No, I was <laughs> you're not listening. You're, you're not said, listening. You're not listening. <laughs> I was gonna say is that um we had you on, but we also had the first podcaster ever on our show. Oh yeah. About a month ago. Yeah. First like in the world. The first podcaster, nice. period. What's the name? Paul Barron. And oh really? Yeah, Paul was on. So we we heard the story about the R R S feed and and uh, he was a part of that. Wow! <laughs> so it was really interesting to hear also where the future is going with podcasting, and uh, there's some really interesting stuff ahead of us. So, um, but I really want to thank you, Sean. It's always a pleasure. You inspire you've inspired me since I met you, and you still continue to blow my mind. Uh, I do really want to figure out how do I learn one day to get Gary V on my show because I think me and Gary are from the same. Same uh, DNA because I, I think like him. I listen to his stuff every morning, um, and I, I really think like him too, right? You'll get him. I gotta get Gary on. I gotta get Gary on because I, I love what he does. I love his. I love everything that he does. It, it's 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 pure. We need we need more Garys. We need more Shans in the world as well. But I just want to thank you, Sean. Like I said, you inspire us. Up here in Canada, we may be small, but we do listen to you. We had a lot of people listening to you today on Instagram as well. And definitely on TikTok too. So just want to thank you for your time. I know appreciate it's Friday night and uh, we appreciate it big time. So thank you so much. My first yeah. night. Was your first late night? Well, like, did, I'm your first, eh? Probably probably not your last. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll keep it going. Dominic, it was a pleasure to meet you. Nice meeting you, Sean. Take care. <laughs> reach out, reach out anytime. And that's anybody anybody that's listening. I'm, I'm weirdly available. You can find me. At yeah, you Sean. can look up Kelly Barbecue tags all that stuff just google them you don't even need that just you type in sean you google hit the w at, and you come at, up at gpt i'm weirdly <laughs> available awesome thank you so much sean take care thanks sean